there are different types of electromagnetic radiation, at least the way they're put out. Uh, one's black body radiation, and that's uh, typified by the incandescent bulb. Incandescent bulb puts out a lot of wavelengths, some of which we use, some of which, man, I can feel the heat here. It puts out a lot of energy we don't need. Now, the fluorescent bulb, it doesn't work off this thing called black body radiation. It works off of discrete emissions uh, and discrete uh, de excitation of electron orbitals, which is hard to put on a package. But let me explain how they work. Black body radiation uh, is it's like random heating. If I, if I heat something, you know what the heat does. It makes the molecules jiggle. And the more I heat it, the harder the molecules jiggle. But some of the molecules aren't jiggling that much, and some are. It's like they're not all jiggling at the same rate. And so you've got this distribution of, you know, over wavelength and of intensity. And you've got these objects, and you've got almost a bell curve. But you've got this nice distribution of colors. Maybe this is a short wavelength. Maybe this is out in the blue. And this is out in the red. And this for a light bulb, this would be like right, right in the yellow. And so it peaks in the yellow, so mostly I see yellow. But all those molecules in that tungsten wire as the electrons shoot through it, they're all jiggling at different rates. And so some of them are jiggling less and some of them are jiggling a lot more. And you're seeing this continuous spectrum of disturbances. If I look at just the visible portion, I'd see something like this. Uh, what you see with a rainbow. It starts with the red and it smoothly transitions into the higher frequency yellow, the green, and on to the blue. Nice smooth transition. That's black body radiation. And it really, it just depends on the jiggling. And it doesn't matter what the object is. If I have a, a if you put a rock in a fireplace and, and you heat it up, the rock turns red hot. Low end of the spectrum. If you get the fire hotter, you put the, and the rock's still in there, it can get hotter, hotter, it can get white hot, so it's pretty much towards the center. Now, I don't know if you can get a rock that's hot, but you can put steel uh, in a furnace, and you can get it even hotter than that, and you heat it up, it's going to get blue hot. And so, the wavelength that you give out is related to the temperature that the object's at. The surface of the sun is uh, 6,000 kelvins. It's yellow, or it's white. And uh, you heat up a light bulb, uh, getting pretty near that hot, just to approximate that color. So that's the way black body radiation works. It's an amalgam of all kinds of different jigglings. And remember, each jiggling is a charge. Uh, around each nucleus, there are electrons. And if you jiggle the atom, the electrons and everything, they jiggle. And as they jiggle, they put off a certain frequency. If you've got lots of different jiggling, lots of different frequencies, it's a big mix of colors. Now, discrete emission of radiation, it works differently. For discrete radiation, I work off the electron orbitals. And here's how that goes. Here's the nucleus of an atom. For every type of atom, which means uh, every different element, there are electron orbitals associated with it. So each type of atom, hydrogen or helium or oxygen, carbon, xenon, they all have these sets of what are called allowed energy states, electron orbitals. And the electron can occupy any of these. The more electrons there are, which means the bigger the element, the more complex in general the sets are. But each of these sets of electron orbitals are like fingerprints. They're unique to that particular element. And what happens is, if I have an electron where it likes to be, which is in the lowest energy state, I'll call it an E minus for an electron, and I hit it with some energy, I can, uh, well, I can hit it with, uh, boy, that's solid, hit it with uh, a knock it, a collision of some sort. I can hit it with a photon a piece of light that will give it enough energy and it will be absorbed by the electron. Uh, and there are other ways to do it. And what will happen is, if I do that, it's going to give the electron more energy and it will tend to move up to a higher energy orbital. Now, it won't actually move up. It'll just stop being here and start being here. 
If I get enough energy, it can jump all the way up. It can't land anywhere in between. It can only land here, here, or maybe here, depending on the energy I give it. Now, they won't last very long up there. These states up here are unstable. It wants to get back down to the lowest possible state. And so what it'll do is it'll dump its energy. And so when it comes back down, it has to get rid of that energy, and that energy is in the form of a photon, which is proportional to the frequency. So a certain wavelength. So when I jump this, this is a discrete energy, right? And the frequency is set because it's a discrete energy. So the wavelength's always going to be same, the same for that transition. The wavelength for this transition, the photon that's ejected to get rid of that energy, is always going to be the same. So if I excite an atom, it's going to give off discrete wavelengths, depending on where its orbitals are. I should tell you just a little bit about orbitals. We talked about, we talked about harmonics and standing waves. Well, you've been told, I think, that an electron is moving around the nucleus like a planet around the sun, or a satellite around a planet. But it's not exactly that way. Uh, electrons have just as much wave component as particle component. And what it is, that basic, that first lowest orbital, it's the first harmonic wave. An electron has a wave associated with it. And this first harmonic right here, if I wrap this around in a circle, the nodes would touch, right? You know, bring it, all, bring it around all together, and I'd have a continuous harmonic wave. Now, if I want to go higher, then I have to get up to that second harmonic. I can't be anywhere in between because I don't get anything. But if I can make it up to the second harmonic, that's where it'll land. Each of these orbitals is really a harmonic. First, second, third, fourth. And they're unique to each type of atom. Now, that's why we get, when we heat up atoms, and we have few of them so the collisions don't average them out and make black body radiation, we get something like this. Here's hydrogen. Now we're looking between uh, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So that, this is green light at 500 nanometers. Uh, this is red light here, blue light down here. This is hydrogen. If you heat up hydrogen, and you just work off what's called the emission spectra from the electrons getting energy, going up to a higher orbit, and then dumping it down and getting rid of photons, you get discrete wavelengths because they have to make discrete jumps. This is a fingerprint for hydrogen. We can look at, we can look at something uh, close to home and see how much hydrogen, see whether it's hydrogen or not. We can look at distant stars and spread the light out because this is a spectrum where we spread the light out and we can find out where the hydrogen is. Sodium's different, different type of atom, and it's got different spectra. Same with neon, and all the elements have different type of emission spectra. And we can use this to determine, uh, with a gas chromatograph, for example, we can determine what elements and what compounds are inside different materials, working off this discrete energy at the excitation. The incandescent bulb works off of black body radiation. It puts out a lot of energy. It peaks right at the visible wavelength that we can see, but it's, it puts out maybe a little UV, but a lot of infrared, and it puts out heat. It's pretty wasteful. The fluorescent bulb uses maybe a quarter of the, quarter of the power, but uh, it works off a discrete spectra. And so instead of having this broad spectrum right here of colors, it puts out maybe, if you look through it, you spread out the light, it puts out maybe four different colors. And what happens is to your eye, it looks like you're seeing all the colors, but you're really only seeing four. That's why it doesn't look quite the same. But that process is so much more uh, conservative. It, it's so much more efficient as far as converting electricity to light that it, uh, it only takes about 15 watts to put out the same amount of light as a 60-watt incandescent bulb.